What's up everybody, this is Cool Dude and welcome back to another Cool Review. Today, we are going to be looking at another Disney Plus movie. Yeah, feels like it's been a while since I've talked about it, like a Disney Plus thing. Um, I, mean, I know I talked about Mandalorian earlier, but like, not like a movie. Last time I, I think the last movie I did was Onward, and it was an alright movie. If you want to, you know, look more about my thoughts, you can check out that video um, in the playlist of Cool Reviews. But today, we're going to be talking about Disney Pixar's Soul. Um... This came out in 2020, which was supposed to come out in theaters, but unfortunately it did get, like, just a Disney Plus only, you know, watch. Um, I had a feeling it was gonna, anyway, so. Um, yeah, you could still, I believe you could still watch it right now on Disney Plus, but, um, yeah, and I know, at first, you know, technically not the first African American in a Disney movie, because we have Princess and the Frog that exists, but, um, it's the first African American main actor in a Disney Pixar one, I believe, so. No, it's pretty, 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 that's pretty awesome, I like that. Um, so, as a movie, how does this hold up? Uh, it's unique. Um, let's, let's, so let's, let's talk about the movie first. Um, so the basic plot is about this man, and, um, you know, who we discuss the main character here, um, in Seoul, and he has a very big passion for jazz music, but... He feels like he, you know, he's not doing a whole lot with his life right now. He just, he doesn't, he hasn't found his, you know, purpose. So, he, after, like, he gets a gig that, like, you know, he's gonna, like, revolutionize his career. He, um, he dies. Like, that's the only minor spoiler that I'm gonna say for this review. Like, there's gonna be no other spoilers about what happens at the end or, like, what the movie is or, like, what the world is. But I'm pretty sure that's not really a huge spoiler if you've seen the trailers because I think the trailers show him dying. So, I'm just gonna say he dies. So, and kind of out of nowhere, too. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, he dies, and he somehow ends up going to the Great Beyond, but then after hijinks ensue, he is in the Great Before, and so, you know, he gets assigned, because they, they don't know that he's not supposed to be there, um, he gets assigned to this number 22, I believe it's like a misguided soul, like number 22, who is voiced by Tina Fey, and she, she is the soul, or he, she is the, they don't have a gender in the movie, there's a soul that, um, you know, just hates life, and, you know, he wants to make everyone's life a living pain, and he doesn't want to go to the real world, because, you know, doesn't, he hates things, everything. So, it's up to him to, like, help him find his purpose, like, the meaning of life, and all that stuff, and, um, you know, along the way, he wants to get with back to his body, right? So, just from describing the movie, it's a lot different than some of his other, than some of Pixar's other movies. It's not like, you know, it's not like one of those ones, because Disney, Pixar has never, you know, they've handled some very tough issues, you know. Uh, Toy Story 3, you know, was about growing up, Wally was about preserving the earth, um, and even Up was kind of about moving on from your, moving on with your life, to stop clinging to the past. This one is definitely a lot more grown up than some of those other ones. Um, so, yeah, and even the dialogue sounds all grown up, the, um, overall story is just a lot more grown up. It reminds me a lot of, if you've seen it, It's a Wonderful Life, which is a fantastic movie, you should definitely watch it, it's a, like, a cinematic classic, but if you've seen that one, you know it's about him finding, you know, the true meaning of life, and just really, like, finding what his life would have been, like, like what life would have been like if he wasn't around and seeing how much his life really affects people and that's kind of how this feels like it's not like exactly the same movie obviously there's a lot different about it but that's just how it kind of reminds me of um so let's get to the good stuff first before we get to the bad but the bad stuff is really there's really not that much bad stuff in it so a good stuff obviously first african-american actor that's great it's awesome i love to see racial you know representation in any movie it, good or bad i like to see them so it's awesome um second the visuals are great, but then again, it's Pixar, so not really much. Respect. And even their bad movies, like some of the Cars movies, are not really like visually bad. Like all of them have a lot of good visual eye candy, so that's no big surprise there. Um, again, the dialogue is just a lot more grown up, and um, like it's not like because I feel like Pixar, you are very grown up, very grown up movies, but you, you at the same time you know it's a kids' film, so there's gonna be like these minor jokes here and there, whether it's like secret adult jokes or like, you know, just little kid jokes, you know, it's just the jokes there to kind of like keep it going. There are, not to say there are not any jokes in Soul, and we'll get to those, but like, it's really a lot more about the story, taking into the story and getting enthralled in this world. And um, that's another good thing I like about this movie is just that it has such a, 
well-defined um, world because you know the great beyond and the great before they actually go into a lot of great de detail about what it is and you know what like being born and being dead is and it's surprising that they would touch upon this stuff because this is so I think out of left field for Pixar not like too far but it's like far enough to me to be like wow Pixar what the hell so you know I think it's very very good and um yeah, I like the voice acting in this. It's very some pa fantastic, especially from Tina Fey. Um, I think, like, the fact that she just kind of owns her, you know, narcissistic character and all that stuff, I think it's just very amazing. And the character growth that she does go through in the movie, which I won't say how she does it or what it is, but it's very, very good as well. I like it a lot. Um, and, uh, yeah, just overall, I love the, the, the jazz presence is not, like, overly hyped like there is jazz in it to represent his thing but i like that it's not like all it's just oh i like jazz like because sometime in the movie you'll see like him like flashing through like different moments in his life and you know how those were really more joyful than jazz music was and either that i think that was really nice that they did that because it's like it's not just one passion because that's not very realistic if you ask me like nobody has just one thing that they love and like i think there's their purpose in life because i think we can under misunderstand that you know you don't just have one goal. We have so many other things that we've done that are amazing. So I like that. Um, with that being said, there are a few things in this movie that I think is just preventing it from really being in the high ranks. Because as much as I'm praising this movie for its adult, you know, its adult uh, talking to the adults, you know, more I think it's more aimed at adults than the kids. Um, dialogue is great. Voice acting is great, though. The story is just absolutely brilliant. It even you, some might think it's a ripoff of Inside Out, but like the way it plays out and like how they discuss it is drastically different. Um, the effects are really cool, but there's just a few things in it that I think are preventing it from being top-notch Pixar for me. So let's get to those issues, shall we? Con number one is that it is such an adult movie. I mean, just. I like how grown up it is. Like, I don't mind that it's so adult and mature. Like, I like that those kind of movies. I like the movies that can like push the envelope a little bit. But with the way the things that they talk about in this movie, because they do talk a lot about death and all that stuff and life and you know like finding a purpose. And if you, I'm just gonna tell you right now, from where I see it, if you have like little little kids that want to watch this, like maybe like under the age of 12 or 10, I would not recommend this movie honestly because it's not that it's gonna be bad, but it's just. I don't feel like it's gonna connect with them, you know? Not like toys, like movies like Toy Story and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, it's, it's it's very weird because it is so grown up, but I feel like it's not one of those movies like Ratatouille where it's like anyone can cook, because that movie was also very grown up in its dialogue, but like at the same time, its message could appeal to a younger audience, but at the same time, this one is like not like one of those to me, like in the message it's trying to tell. It's just, I don't know, like I feel like it's a lot more geared towards adults than kids, so I don't feel like little kids could watch it as much and get attached to it or really grasp what it was trying to say, but that's just my opinion on that matter. Um, a con number two for me is that even though I kind of described what I think the plot was, or like, no, no, I didn't describe the spoilers of the plot, but like, what I thought the message was, it definitely is very muddled in how it handles the message, in my opinion. Like, I feel like on a first viewing, you don't really understand what it's trying to say. I don't know, it just feels kind of, like, jumbled in how it's supposed to do that. Um, also, con number three is that some of the humor really doesn't work. Like, some of the beginning stuff I actually thought was pretty funny, you know, when he's in the Great Beyond and all that stuff. I thought that was really funny. But when they're actually in the real world and they're doing, like, their hijinks to do all that, you know, the human body stuff, I don't know, some of the humor really doesn't work. Because I feel like some of the, like, the dialogue was so adult that I feel like it didn't need any jokes and all that. In all honesty, but they gotta pick up with that Disney formula, so they have to, you know, put jokes in there to appeal to the audience, but I don't know. And the trailer stuff was by far the worst part. It's like, it felt so out of place, it wasn't funny, like, and it just feels so dishonest. Like, I hate when trailers do that, like, it doesn't, the, the trailer for this movie does not show how good it is at all. Like, it only shows, like, pretty much the weakest parts, like, the weakest comedic moments and all that stuff. And so, I just felt like that was really just put in there for trailer, and that that's it, so... Yeah, those were, that was pretty bad. Um, and, and con number four, I guess, like, the climax is pretty weak. Um, I'm not gonna spoil what it is. And even, like, the villains are not that bad. Like, I don't understand why they need villains. Like, stop adding villains. Like, this, like, some movies don't need villains. I wish Disney would kind of understand that sometimes. Like, not every movie has to have villains. Like, the Inside Out, what this movie is kind of reminding me of, like, they didn't have any villain, and it worked fine. Why did this one need one? Like, I don't get it. 
And it's not like it plays a big role in it or anything. It's like, it's just there for the final act. That's it. And even the final act itself feels really rushed because it's like, okay, here's the big monster. And now, oh, it's dead. We defeated it. And now wrap up movie. It's like, why did we need that? It feels like so tonally out of place in this movie. It just, I don't know. It, just, it really bugs me that. But honestly, other than that, I really don't have any other complaints with this movie. Um, if I were to give it a rating, I would give it a four souls out of five. Look, this movie is great. I agree with people. It's pretty good. It's definitely better than Onward to me. Um, I like the the animation is great. Character acting is amazing. Um, I like the story. It's pretty refreshingly original. And I don't know. I like the whole like world that they build in this. But I feel like it's really appealing to a more adult audience. I feel like it's alienating like children that I think it wants to maybe I don't know wants to attract. Um, and it really is just kind of more grown up, and it might not connect with the little kids as much as it should um, for a Pixar, for a Disney movie. I mean, um, and just and you know, it's uh, I feel like the overall climax and the some of the villains they set up is not that great, and the humor you can really fall for that. But really, other than that, this movie is great. I highly recommend it for Disney Plus. If you really, because I, I mean. What else are you going to watch? You know, you might as well watch it. I'd actually recommend this movie pretty much very well. Um, so, yeah, that is it. That is going to wrap it up for this review of Disney's Soul. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, uh, let me know down the, um, leave a like and let me know down in the comments what you think of Soul. I don't know. I know I'm pretty late on this review because there's, like, tons of people who are already reviewing it. And uh, But, yeah, I'm, I'm late to everything, so no really no secret there. Um, so, with all that wrapped up, until next time, guys. Stay cool, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, y'all.